Okay, let's finally get into the negotiations. So let's cover the interests of each party. So debt, let's say we've been given a term sheet where the max debt is eight billion pounds. And so that implies a gearing ratio of 80%. And we know that the minimum DSCR is 1.20 times. And we also know that this project has demand risk. If there's anything which affects passenger revenues, then the project will suffer. For example, the coronavirus shows us in stark relief where airlines have been going into hibernation, passenger volumes are way down, and governments are essentially banning travel. So that is massive demand risk. And what it might suggest is that 1.20 times is actually not quite enough. And you might find that lenders arguing for a much higher DSCR, for example, 1.4 times. But let's take this for now because this is our simplified case study. For the equity IRR, we're saying that Ferrovial's appetite is for 11% return on their equity. And then from the regulator's perspective, the Civil Aviation Authority wants to keep the aero charge as low as possible, basically for public welfare and to encourage tourism and travel in and out of London. So here's where the negotiations begin. And I've set up a table here which basically has all of these constraints from each party and it sets them up in table form. So if we look at the errors here, so the first error around the minimum DSCR, the current minimum DSCR is 1.15 times and we discovered that when we calculated that. The target is minimum of 1.2 times, so there's an error. The gearing is fine because it's 70% and the target is 80%, so we can't exceed 80%, so that's okay, and the amount invested is okay. Now from the equity perspective, the IRR is currently 6.66%. And the target is 11%. So that's obviously an error. We're not achieving the returns. And from an equity perspective, this is not a very attractive deal. And obviously the NPV at the target IRR is not a good NPV either. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight to the end of the optimization process to show you where we're heading. So now I've filled in a bunch of the optimizations. For example, for the senior debt, for the amount invested, let's say we're going up to the gearing of 80%, so we're investing 8 billion pounds. And the minimum DSCR under the optimized case is 1.33 times. So that's all okay. That exceeds the 1.2 times DSCR minimum, and so we're okay with that. From an equity IRR perspective, we have optimized it. So instead of a 6.66% per annum return, we're at 11.05%. Okay, so how did we get there? Well, let's go on the journey. What are the levers that we have? So here are the levers that I've pulled. I've changed the debt repayment type from a fixed to an annuity basis. I've increased the concession from 25 to 30 years. And I've increased the debt tenor from 20 to 25 years. I've also increased the gearing from 70 to 80%. And then I've ever so slightly increased the error revenue to get the equity IRR up to 11%. Okay, so what I suggest is you do this as an exercise using the Excel provided and basically set up these different scenarios in the scenario manager. I've listed the scenarios here, so I suggest you pause the video and set those up and then we'll go through them and basically analyze the model. Okay, so hopefully you did that exercise. So how does the model help us to get to this optimized case? Well, basically the scenario manager. And here's what the scenario manager table looks like once it's been set up as per the conditions that I specified earlier. Okay, so case one, this is our base case conditions. This is essentially what we've been discussing so far. And then case two, we're changing to the annuity case. Okay, so let's discuss what exactly effect this has. So we're going from fixed to annuity. The fixed this is what the profile looks like in terms of we're drawing down the debt initially and then we're paying it down in steady repayment amounts. And so in terms of the principal plus interest annual repayment, you'll see that we have a fixed principal amount going out every year and then the interest amount decreases as we start repaying down that debt. Now, how does that change for annuity? Well, for the first graph, you can see that it has a more curved profile and that's because we're repaying a reduced amount of principal upfront and more towards the end. So you see on the second annuity graph here, the total principal plus interest amount is the same every period. So this has the effect of overall increasing our equity IRR and decreasing our minimum DSCR by basically leveling out our overall debt service so it's not as high. 
Okay, so switching to scenario three, where we have a longer concession, so we have an extra five years of concession, you might see from years 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, we all have cash flows now in these years. And so what's that going to do? Well, it hasn't changed our DSCR, it's still 1.15, because we're back to a fixed repayment type, but it has improved our equity IRR, basically because we're getting that cash at the end flowing through to equity. Okay, let's look at case four, which is the longer concession plus the increased tenor. So we're now at a debt tenor of 25 years. And basically, if you look between these two, you can see that the blue portion here in the graph is now repaying in years 24 to 28. And so this means that we have overall less debt service in years four to 23, and it improves our DSCR and improves our equity IRR. So it has quite a big effect. So now going to case five, I'm going to slightly undo that effect by having a 80% gearing ratio, so 80% debt instead of 70% debt. So we have more granularity on the chart now, and what we'll see is as we increase, basically you can expect the debt service to go up. So hopefully you notice that in the chart, I'll flick back and back again, you can see the debt service component increase. What does that mean? Well, it means less distributions and Therefore, the DSCR should go down. However, our equity IRR has gone up. Why is that? Well, because we're putting out less equity at the start. So instead of putting in 30% of the total cost of equity, we're only putting in 20%, and we're getting those distributions as shown in the chart. Okay, and this process goes on with case six and seven, where basically we're combining the cases that we've run so far, and we're changing the error charge to get our equity up to 11%. Okay, so that's it for the model. You have learned the business case of a regulated airport and how the WAC comes in to determine the financing cost, which helps us to calculate the aero charge, so the landing fees. Then we've gone through the main components in a project finance deal and assembled a cash of waterfall and then gone through and calculated all the debt metrics and the returns to equity and the project as a whole. We've discussed the complexities and the simplifications that we've made in putting this simple model together. And then we've gone through and according to the constraints served to us from debt, from the equity investors and from the users, we've put together a deal. We've used the scenario manager to step through and satisfy these constraints and hopefully come together with a proposal that works.